Hello and welcome to our cell model. Inside this model we have some organelles and structures that we're going to talk about. This is an animal cell, we're going to talk about a plant cell a little bit later. Um, if you'd like some information about each of the organelles or structures, look behind you, there's some information there. Let's talk about our first organelle, which is the nucleus. Uh, the nucleus is made of an outer membrane, which has some holes in it, called nuclear pores. Inside there's DNA and a few other little structures. Its job is to control the cell, um, give the cell information it needs to make proteins and therefore run itself. Um, the nuclear membrane, the outside, protects the DNA inside. The DNA makes copies of itself on a molecule called RNA. The RNA can come out of the nucleus through the nuclear pores and then go to other structures in the cell. Let's have a look at the nucleolus now. <coughs> Inside the nucleus you'll see a dark spot there, that's the nucleolus. Uh, the nucleolus is a granular structure and its job is to make ribosomal RNA which goes together to make ribosomes. So we've got a few ribosomes around our cell. Uh, the ribosomes are really small, on this scale you wouldn't be able to see them, but we've made them big so that you can. We'll talk about what ribosomes do in a minute. Let's talk about the rough ER now. Alright, the rough ER... The rough ER is a system of membranes that extends from the nucleus to the cell membrane. It started with ribosomes, again you wouldn't be able to see them on this scale. It started with ribosomes and they make proteins. So its job is to make proteins, package them, fold them a little bit and send them either around the cell or to other cells by extending to the cell membrane and kicking them out. Let's have a look at ribosomes now. We're back. There's, we've got a ribosome over here and a ribosome over here. We've got another one that I'll hold in my hand to show you what it looks like. Um, it's made of ribosomal RNA and it's got two structures, a large subunit and a small subunit. The nucleus makes a copy of its DNA in a molecule called mRNA in a process called transcription. That mRNA makes its way out of the nucleus to a ribosome and then it gets turned into a protein in a process called translation. That's done by the ribosomes. Let's have a look at our next structure. Mm -hmm. All right, our next structure is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum over here. Um, its job, it's involved in uh, metabolic processes because it can contain some enzymes inside it. It can also make lipids, so fats and oils. Um, it has no ribosomes on it compared to the rough ER, and that's how you can tell them apart. Under a microscope, the rough ER looks very rough because it's got all these tiny ribosomes. The smooth ER is very smooth. Let's have a look at our next structure now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dotted around our cell, we have some mitochondria. I have a little model of a mitochondria in here. So it's made of an outer membrane, an inner membrane that's folded, and a fluid on the inside called cristae. Um, it looks a bit like a maze if you look at an electron micrograph of it. Embedded in the inner membrane is a whole heap of enzymes, and their job is to release energy from food. So the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It makes a lot of energy and stores it in the form of ATP, and your cells use that energy in the form of ATP to do lots of their processes, like moving, like maving, making proteins, and so on. Let's look at our next organelle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm over here. So now we're going to talk about um, some small membrane structures inside cells. So this is a vesicle. It's just a membrane that's surrounding something. Um, inside here we've got some protein. You can hear the protein shaking along inside there. Um, this is just a membrane that could make its way to the cell membrane and then um, expand out, it disgorge the contents to the outside of the cell. So these proteins could be used by another part. So it's just a simple membrane surrounding something. So we could call this a vesicle if we wanted to. It's a very small one. It's a very small vacuole as well. We could call it that too. Um, over there we have a lysosome. So let's go over there now. <laughs> I'm over here. Okay, so let's talk about the lysosome. This is a lysosome over here. It's a membrane on the outside and inside there's some enzymes. And the job of those enzymes is to break down waste products inside the cell. So things like a protein that isn't being used anymore can be broken down by the enzymes inside the lysosome and turned into amino acids that can then be reused by the cell. Let's talk about the next structure now, the Golgi body. <laughs> here I am. Here's a Golgi body. So the Golgi body is a stack of membranes on top of each other, and its job is to package and secrete things like proteins and lipids. So a protein could be produced by the rough endoplasmic reticulum, could make its way in a vesicle to the Golgi body. The Golgi body might fold the protein into a particular shape, then produce another vesicle that could export the protein outside the cell. We have a vesicle over here that we just talked about, the big red thing over there. Um, let's talk about the cytoskeleton now. <laughs> 
So next we're going to talk about the cytoskeleton. So the cytoskeleton is a system of uh, protein fibers that exist all throughout the cell. Um, here we can see the thickest part of the cytoskeleton, the microtubules. Um, their job is it's scaffolding. It holds organelles in place. You can move the organelles around, but it also maintains the cell's shape. So here we have the microtubule. Um, this um, vesicle could move along the microtubule. Um, it's pulled by a little protein called planes, and that could pull it to the cell membrane, then it could disgorge its contents. I have a little model of the cytoskeleton here. The thick parts we can see, that's the microtubules, and then we have some string inside here of different types. We have microfilaments and intermediate filaments. So it's those three components that make up the cytoskeleton. Let's talk about our last part of the animal cell, the cell membrane. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, all around the cell we have cell membrane. It separates the inside of the cell from the outside of the cell. So, my black walls here, the roof, um, the floor, that would all be cell membrane. Um, its structure is shown in this little model here. So, in this model we have two layers and then we have a protein. So, these two layers, this is called a phospholipid bilayer. So, these molecules are phospholipids. So, they have an end that really likes water. This is hydrophilic. And they have this end that's made of long chain carbon. Um, it's hydrophobic. It doesn't like water. So, the bits that like water are sticking to the outside of the cell or the inside of the cell where there's lots of water. And the bits that don't like water stick to each other. Embedded throughout the cell membrane are proteins. They have particular jobs. Some are channels that can allow substances through. Um, some are pumps, which can pump substances from the outside in or inside out. Um, some are communication. So this one here would be communicating. It could, by touching another cell, say this cell is touching another cell. So that's the animal cell. Let's have a look at the plant cell now. Mm. Yeah, and we're back. Now we're in a plant cell, and you can see it looks entirely different. Um, there's a few chloroplasts dotted around in the large central vacuole. Um, other than that, there's a cell wall as well on the outside, and we've lost our lysosome. Um, plant cells don't have lysosomes. So, let's talk about our first structure, the chloroplast. I've got some chloroplasts over here, I've got one behind me, I've got one over there. I also have a large model here, it looks a bit like an avocado. So, the chloroplast, it's green because it contains a chemical called chlorophyll, and chlorophyll is really important in a process called photosynthesis. In photosynthesis, um, light energy from the sun or from light sources hits the leaves of a plant. Um, that light energy is used to split up uh, water to produce a hydrogen ion. There's a very complex chemical process that produces um, glucose, the sugar source for plants, and oxygen, which we breathe, from carbon dioxide that's floating around in the atmosphere and water that's in the soil. So it's a very complicated process, but we just reduce it down to a simple equation. In terms of structure, there's an outer membrane again. There's these little tiny little packets of membrane. These are called thylakoids, and they're stacked together to make what's called a granum. So if you have a look at a picture of a chloroplast on an electron micrograph, electron micrograph uh, photo of a chloroplast, you can see these kind of streaks, black and white streaks throughout the cell, and that's the granum inside. So let's look at our next organelle now. Okay. I'm over here now. Now, this is a bit smaller than it regularly would be. It would normally take up a majority of the inside of the cell. This is a large central vacuole that's found in many plant cells. Um, it's used for water storage, but also storing sugars and other carbohydrates and other substances um, inside the cell. The plant cell can pump water into it, and when it does that, the cell gets bigger, and it can also take water out of it when it's running out of water, and that causes the cell to shrink. So this is a large central vacuole. Let's look at the cell wall now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Last bit we're going to talk about is the cell wall. So you have to imagine I'm surrounded by a cell membrane. On the outside of that, there's a cell wall. And you only find cell walls in plant cells, fungal cells, and bacterial cells. I'll show you a picture of its structure. So here we have the cell membrane from before. This is the hydrophilic ends that are pointing out of the cell um, to the outside of the cell where there's water outside. Between that and the outside, we have this layer of cellulose. So the cellulose strands, the cellulose fibers, um, cellulose is a sugar that's made up of lots of glucoses joined together. Um, on top of that, we have a layer of a substance called lignin, which um, joins one cell to another cell. Um, these cellulose fibers are important because that's what paper is, that's what wood is. Um, it's really, really strong. When a cell takes in water, a plant cell takes in water, it can expand and push against the cell wall, um, but it won't burst like an animal cell would because the cell wall is there to hold it together. Uh, when a plant cell takes in water and starts to use up its water, it starts to shrink, the cell wall is left around the outside. 
Um, and this is what wood is. So if you have a tree that's fallen over and died, the cells inside have died, but you're left with the cell wall on the outside. That's what we use when we use wood. So I hope you've enjoyed our tour of our cell. Thanks for watching. Bye.